Hello, my name is Devin, and welcome to Module 7 on Inclusive Politics of Urban Mobility. A recurring theme in this course is the political nature of allocating space in urban environments. One of the biggest challenges cities face today is retooling from cities that were built for cars into cities that have functional and attractive alternatives. Cars represent a lot more than just a useful means for getting around. The American Ralph Nader called them psychosexual dreamboats, and they're definitely tied up with identities, cultures, and ways of life. In your first reading for this module, from the book Street Fights in Copenhagen, Bicycle and Car Politics in a Green Mobility City, you read about the tensions that come up when space is prioritized for bicycling, walking, and public transportation instead of cars. I find striking similarities to the case here in Bergen. Bergen has similar goals for most trips to be made by cycling, walking, and public transportation, but last year a new political party rose up and took a lot of seats in our local parliament. Their name translates to the People's Action Against Toll Roads. There is a toll ring around Bergen, and it helps to finance the public transportation that we're building. One of their claims is that the establishment, including city planners and consultants such as our own lecturer, Hovard, are out of touch with what normal people want. And of course, by normal people here, they mean people who drive cars. Another one of their central claims is that it's unfair for people who drive cars to fund public transportation that they don't use. Of course, people who don't drive cars help fund services in the case of car collisions, health services that arise from air pollution, and of course, road infrastructure for cars. These cases have a lot of dimensions, but one thing is for sure, whenever big changes are made in the name of sustainability, there will be resistance. Your second and fourth readings for today deal with uh, rapid new developments in technology, in smartification discourses and automation. Now, the discourses that advocate for smartification often use the language of um, delivering services. It reminds me of other neoliberal discourses around how public goods should be allocated. In contrast, the video that you're going to be discussing on how buses represent democracy in action uses the language of rights. So for example, the right to safe mobility. There are a lot of issues that come up with transportation and I'm sure that you guys will have a good time discussing them today. Until next time.